and you can go home and you can leave and not be a part of the church. But I'm, I have something that is on my heart that is, I believe, the thing that is going to forever change us, you guys. I feel so strongly about this. I feel so, I've never felt such an important message that the Lord has, but for this hour so we can get on with the Lord's business. Because I believe this. I believe this is the very thing that we need in order for us to walk out what God's called us to do. In order for, oh, I mean, he has told you guys some of the most profound things that you can't even believe them. You can't believe them because you have these things in your brain that says you can't. And I'm telling you, you can. I'm telling you, and I'm not, my word is, has, a, has a, a small little minute piece in the whole uh, overall scheme of what God has to say. But God says you can do it, and his word is true, and you will change if you will take these words to heart. And I, I'm, I'm so serious about this, you guys. I am serious. And if I, if I rattle your chain a little bit, I am doing my job. If a preacher and a teacher doesn't rattle the, the people that the Lord has entrusted him with, then uh, he is not doing his job or she is not doing their job. So get ready. Get ready because I am going to say what the Lord has put on my heart. All right, enough said, enough said. And you could come talk to me later on, and please forgive me if you need to in order for you to get through it. I, I, you guys, I am, I am, I am not, I do, I hate passivity. Why? I hate it. I hate it with a, a vengeance. Why? Because it keeps us from entering in. Why do I know that place so well? Because I was so passive for so many years in my life. Come see, come saw. Whatever will be, will be. Because some of us have allowed that to take place. And as it, it's affected us. All right, we're on the same. We're on the same topic, detoxing your brain. I'm going to get through more of this. Um, I want to just, ref, uh, just uh, excuse me, detoxing your brain. And this is uh, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, a cognitive, cognitive neuroscientist. In other words, she deals with the, the brain, all right? We have two, two, emo two emotions, joy or fear. God created us for joy. He, he created us for that. The scripture is clear in this. You do not have a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 7. All right, I'm to, hold on before I pick off and I don't pick up and I don't take off from this. Um, Didi, you hit it right on the money. I'm going to ditto the very things. Earlier this morning, what was said is, and I'm going to ask some of you to change your morning. Uh, what, so for some of you, morning is at 7 o'clock at night. But whatever that, whatever that looks like, because some of you work different shifts. But I'm going to ask you to do this. Please do this. Just ch I, I'm going to challenge you to do this. The Lord said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And you know what I mean? What believe that means? I also believe it's not about things that happen in life. We seek him before, like we seek him before we do anything for the answers. But first and most important, we seek him in his word. And he also talked about prayer in that word. I just want you to know this. The Lord said the very things to me that he wants me to do, to speak that. He spoke it through her. He's speaking it through me. And I'm going to just, I'm going to, I had a little bit more, a little bit more to it. Some of us don't wait or don't do it at all by the time we get home because we're wasted from work. You know, when you get home and you've had a hard day at the office or a hard day at the quarry, it's really difficult to get in the Word. And what happens, I, I know. And what happens is, we pre the Lord prepares the way as we're going through the day, and He prepares us for what's before us. As we seek Him in His Word, He'll show us, He'll prophetically speak to us. And when we pray, He prepares the way. 
That's how. So prepare the way of the Lord. The song that we sang earlier today. Prepare the way of the Lord. How do you do that? Huh? You begin to intercede and you begin to pray. And then the angelic hosts, they get involved in the whole thing. The angels and the heavenly hosts, they get involved in this thing. And man, it's a, just, a, a, just like the Lord begins to speak these most profound things. And they begin to do these things that are going and they're going to change lives. They're going to change. The Lord is going to change and go before you and prepare the way if you'll do it. Let's face it. Some of us are just flat lazy. And we need to get delivered. Amen? Amen. 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 Why? Takes one to know one. <laughs> Been there, done it. Row the donkey. All right, here we go. That's a Texas saying, James, Brother James. Was it? Say that again. What was that? All right, here we go. Research shows some of these are going to be repeats. So I'm not going to go back much. The reason why I'm, this message is because I've seen some of the greatest men and women take a dive, cause great destruction in their families, seen great destruction. They've allowed great destruction when they were walking on the top. They were moving out in the things of God, and the enemy came to take them out. See, you understand. Remember this. Throughout this whole this whole work that Dr. Um, Carolyn Leaf has shared, it goes both ways. But our, our brain will change if we do our due diligence. That's right. Prove it. Proven. It's a proven scientist. Scientifically. Research shows, and I'll listen to these, this of this, shows that 75 to 90 percent of mental, physical, and behavioral illness comes from one's through life. What happens is, it happens in the heart. Excuse me. It happens in the brain. That's where it all stems. The staggering and eye-opening statistic means only 2 to 5% of mental and physical illness comes from in environmental or genes. Starts in the brain. This is science, you guys. This is, this is not just hypothesis a hypothesis it's a proven fact that's what happens thinking activity genes i want to talk about genes for a second all right genes the basic physical unit of heredity heredity the transmission of genetic character from parents and offspring you see oh it's in my genes my dad did it my mom did it grandpa did it you see, understand all of those can be changed That's right. through a few simple things, seven minutes a day. How many of you have seven minutes a day that you could dedicate your life to do to get healing? That's right. All right. There's some of you that didn't raise your hands. May I, maybe I, you didn't hear the question. How many of you, how many of you could dedicate seven minutes a day to get yourself healed up, cleansed, changed, transformed. I hope you people that are watching by live stream are raising your hand. If you don't have your hand up, you better get it up, man. I'm telling you. This is to help you understand a little better, better. It's a broadcasting of elect, like, a, this is like a television. The broadcasting and electromagnetic waves from one location to another. Okay. So here we are, the big screen, we're watching it. The signal that's being sent. And on the other end, we're recipients of it. See, what happens is in our genes, in our lives, things were passed down from generations. And do you understand that the genes inside of you can be changed? Genes, DNA, they're a part. And it's profound what happens if we will begin to get a hold of the truth. Our conscious, this phenomenal gift from God, to be able to think, activate our genes, and change our brain. Science shows that our thoughts, with their bedded feelings, turn sets of genes on the off in complex relationships. 
We take facts, experiences, and events of our life and assign meaning to them with our thinking, good or bad. We may have a fixed set of genes in our chromosomes by which these genes are active. And how they are active has a great deal to do with how we think and process our experiences. Our thoughts produce words and behavior, which in turn stimulate more thinking and choices that build more thoughts and an endless cycle. Jesus uses science to reveal himself to those that know him. Science without God causes them to make a lot of mistakes, incorrect information, bias information into the world. Science tends to die one thought at a time. As God reveals things, something man, something about man without God tends to make them think that they don't need God. And then he goes and changes it, changes their thinking process, and they're back to the drawing board again. How many scientists are in here? Delbert's here. Um, how many scientists? Okay, very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. Thoughts are real things. They occupy real real estate in our brain. When you have a thought, you have 24 to 48 hours, 48 hours to either allow that to become a thought, to be a part of your long-term memory, or to disallow from your brain. When you choose not to think about it and let it be a part of you and help you let it be a part of your long-term memory. And if it's evil, discard it. Quickly declare the word, of the word of God over it in the washing of the water of the Word. Now, the spiritual warfare catching those thoughts, not allowing them to destroy you, but allowing the good ones to be a part of your life. Amen. It takes 21 days to renovate a toxic thought and 63 days to transform it. Proven. Proven. That's how it's done. How the change is made. Go to Romans 12, starting at 1, and verse 1. How many of you brought your Bibles today or have it on your phone? Oh, you're doing better. The hands are... Well, there's more hands up. Keep it up. Brother Pat, nice to see that. All right. Here we go. I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, I'll give you one more moment. 12 1. Romans 12 1. All right, now I wanted you to keep this in mind while there's people still turn into the pages. The brain is a part of your body, it's not your mind. You understand it? You got it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That means your brain, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Let me help bring a little bit renewed. How many of you have ever done a remodel project on your house? How many of you have been a part of that miserable thing that happens when you remodel a part of your past? <laughs> That's what happens when you begin to renew your mind. It's like you're taking and tearing out the old bathroom. You're tearing out all the walls, all the junk, all the, getting rid of all the mold. You're getting rid of all the old cabinets that have been there since 1903. You're changing the locks, you're changing the, the faucets, and it is ugly when you start. But what happens when you get to the end? Ooh, you can't wait to get in the bathroom, you know? You can't wait to go in there. Sit on that new toilet, and it flushes the first whack, you know? And, you know, or whatever else, you know, you're in there... And you're looking in the mirror, you, you can see it's not all gray and all the water stained. And... You got it? Yeah. All right, that's what happens when we renew our mind with the Word of God. You see what happened was the prophetic word that came this morning. The word the Lord gave me was the same word. And the very things, see, the rhema, the rhema words and the logos, there's something about them. See, the logos 
is a very powerful word. It's our standard. If the rhema contradicts the logos, give it a boot. You got it? All right, very good. All right, just clear up a misunderstanding that, that uh, I said. I just want to make sure you're clear. All right. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. Anybody here desiring to have trans, a transformed mind that isn't sleeping or listening, the Lord is sowing thoughts right now. He's running thousands and thousands of thoughts right now in you. It is such a profound organ. Proverbs 23, 7. If you would go, if you're just kind of getting to know your Bibles, go to the middle of your Bible. You get to Psalms, you're getting real close. I'm just going to go ahead and say it for the sake of time. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. I'm going to tell you a story. The very thing that the Lord had begun to show me about myself. For quite a few weeks now, since the Lord put this on my heart, I have been going to him and doing the very homework that I believe most of you have received a paper at the end. If you haven't yet, we'll get it to you of what that means to do the particular homework that we're going to do. But let me tell you what happened as I start my morning off every morning in prayer and getting in the Word and seeking Him. Now I have one additional thing. For at least seven minutes a day, I'm doing this practice. But seven minutes isn't long enough because i got a lot of work. <laughs> got a lot of, the Lord's got a lot of work to do in me. But this is what He told me. This is what happened. He began to show me. And he's been touching on this. I said, Lord, show me the things that I believed, things in life that I believed. And I saw this mass in my brain of all these neurons. Neurons are cells in your brain. They house information. They house thoughts. And this is what he said to me. He said, David, this is much bigger than you've ever known. And the, top, the, the, the thing that he showed me was, the things that I believed about myself. Because I truly believe this more than ever. A lot of the things and most of the things that the enemy comes to assault us with are things that we believed about ourselves. And I think everything stems from that because it's about fear. Either it's about love, the neurons of love, that are plentiful, or the neurons that look like a dead tree branch that's based in lies and fear. And he began to do a work inside of me, man. He was really concentrating on that particular part of my morning this morning. And it began to change me. As he was doing this work, it was like he was... <laughs> and the things that I had been working on, the things that I had been doing before or some of the other things he had been showing me and destroying in me. I really believe this too, you guys. I really believe this. It's about sometimes the way we feel about ourselves sometimes is the reason why. 60% of the church is into pornography. 57% of the pastors are in pornography. 25% of women are in pornography. And those are the ones that we know about. So I would say this to each and every one of us. If you would get, and you would let that be the first thing in your homework, and I'm going to talk about we're going to do it at the end. If you would let that be the very thing that you start with, but the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you, and he'll show it to you, and he'll show you those things that keep you. I would ask this question. How many of you desire to do the things that the Lord has called you to do on this earth before you go to be home with him? Amen. Okay, um, does anybody have a neighbor that doesn't have their hands? Keep your hands up. Anybody have a neighbor that doesn't have their hand up? 
Okay. Uh, if your neighbor doesn't have their hand up, stick your finger uh, in their ear. No, don't not in their ear. And say, this, this is a good one to get in on. Because you guys, how many of okay, how about, how about I phrase it this way? How many of you want to stand before the Lord? And him to say, I gave you everything. I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. And we say, well, I couldn't. Because my wife said these things to me. Or my dad said these things to me. Or my mom said these things to me. Or the teacher said these things to me. Or fill in the blank. Fill in the blank in your life. Guess what? That is a bunch of horse manure. It is. Because the Lord has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's given you a way to walk out your life in its fullest measure. And it didn't catch him off guard. Okay, I want to say one more thing. You know, I will probably be done with this by 2017. <laughs> But I do, I want to, I just want to say this is really important. You know, I have struggled many times with some of the things that I've heard that many of you have faced. And when we go to the Lord and when we're ministering, we'll say, Lord, where were you? And I have not fully gotten a peace about the things that were said. When he says he was standing right there, let me just tell you what he showed me. And this is what he spoke to me. He said, I was standing right there. And I had my sword ready to take out the enemy, the one that was hurting you. But I give a free will. But if you would have you would have known or you would have said my name the enemy when been removed so he's standing there with his sword and he is waiting for the release of his word or a cry out there's something about that name Jesus that will forever change things. You call Jesus and, you know, in the spirit realm, it's not a second that it takes the angelic hosts and the Lord to respond. Uh, Delbert, see, here's, he's gone. Anybody know what a nanosecond is? Sure, what's, what's a nanosecond? We can't even. Uh, One thousand of a millisecond. And that isn't even close. That's just in our own pea brains here that we have. That's how quickly he responds at his name. Okay. I hope that helps some of you. Did me. All right, here we go. There's a massive, there's billions of neurons that have become destructive in our lives since the time we were children and even in the womb. We talked about the limbic system, and the limbic system is what houses the memories of long-term, short-term. And in that long-term, short-term memory, that's one of the first things that's built is your limbic system. The limbic system is about a bunch of, a bunch of different organs that are part of the brain. Understand what happens when all toxic thoughts that come to infiltrate your brain. From the minute you open your eyes, you're starting to think, building thoughts. And when you go to sleep, your, your, your thoughts throughout the day that you've been thinking are being processed. 
in the night. We have been given the ability to choose the thoughts we think and receive them. All right, I'm going to hold off on this because I want to get to everybody. Did everybody get a paper? Did everybody get a piece of paper? Okay, I'm going to ask you, how many of you, who, did not, who does not have a paper, ushers? Okay, uh, that you got and when you came in. Pastor Didi, um, oh, I just want to say this while you're getting your papers. You guys, please come and be a part of Paul Weber. Paul, for those that don't know, he is a part of the oversight on our church, of our church. And when he comes here, man, he's an amazing teacher. Yeah, there's some more down here, guys. Um, he's an amazing teacher, but he, there's just something about when the oversight comes here. They have things to say to us that they might not say to anybody else, but it's just going to be a, it's going to be a profound weekend. And you know what really bless? We'd love to bless Orhaim. They start at what? Uh, 9:30 is it? 9:30? 10:30. They start at 10:30. Come, let's bless them, man. Let's just let next weekend be a weekend of just soaking in the presence of the Lord. Paul's got. He always have most. Prof- let alone the worship. The worship itself is so profound. But when he starts teaching, it is really it is like awesome revelation. Okay, this is what I want to do. It's page 14. Okay, let me under- let me help you understand. This is your homework. How many of you got text every day from the person we set up last week with to be your accountability partner? Oh, praise God, there's seven of you, eight of you. What happened to the rest of you? You did it together. Okay, you did it together. For husbands and wives, that's good. How many of you other ones? You guys, I'm, I, am, I am serious about this. You know, you guys, I'm serious about this. I am really serious about this. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just, I'm going to exhort you strongly. If you want to get free, you better do what it takes. And it's taking you and God together. See, God's not going to move until you do your part. You understand? Till you renew your mind, till you do what he says, till you pray, he is not going to move. So you're going to sit there and miss out on the greatness of what God has. You're going to miss out on the miracles that the Lord wants to do through you. You're going to miss out on the greatness of life. And even shalom, even in the midst of hell. You can have shalom, you can have his peace in the midst of hell. Or you can go through hell and let it overtake you, your choice. See, God's not going to do something he's already given us the ability and to do. And if you will do these, very, these things seven minutes a day, remember, horse manure, if you tell me you don't have seven minutes a day, horse manure that you can't get up and pray. Horse manure, if you can't get in the word every day, I call it horse manure. Did you get that online? You've been using that excuse? No more. It doesn't hold water. Ministry sessions are going out of business, Joseph. That is exactly right. Because this is what we're going to do. For some of you that didn't hear this, we're going to give you a really small grace release. And then we're going to ask you if you did your homework. And if you, in fact, did not do your homework, then we're going to say you really wasted your time coming today. Because if you don't do your work, homework, and if you don't do what you're supposed to do, and if you haven't done what you're asked to do, we can't help you. Yeah. See, the Lord is requiring us to get our, our fannies operational. Roll out instead of roll over. And let me just say this too. This is imperative. And if you screw up one day and you make a mistake, get back on the bull again and ride that bull. Used to be horses. Today it's bulls. Because we got a lot of things to get right and move from that place where you're at. All right, here we go. I'm just going to go a few minutes over. Okay, you okay with this, going over this? Okay, let me go over this with you just real quick, and I'll be done. I'll just make it, make it. We just had a lot of things to cover. I know most of you really wanted to hear about that trip because most of you, many of you, excuse me, many of you were asking about it, and we want to tell you, it was a hoot. Go. Go. Reminder to everyone about the homework. I've told you what we're going to do in the counseling. We might let you off. 
you know, and we're going to be a lot tougher than Joe is in the Bible school, I'll tell you that right now. These excused absences are going to be few and far between. <laughs> I am serious, though. I am. I'm serious. Because if you don't do your due diligence to get hooked, have I said it enough? Yeah. How, are, am I clear? Yeah. Anybody still asleep? Anybody check it out to turn it back on, turn the gas back on? Okay, turn the gas back on. I am so serious about this because you've got to do something to get your healing done. We're on the way. You're moving into a brand new place in your healing and restoration, focusing on developing awareness, which means you are starting the process of bringing those reprobate thoughts into captivity. Senseless. Excuse me. And you do it by ceaseless prayer. Okay, can I ask you this? I didn't have my um, editor go through this before it went out in print. You'll see at the very end there's a missing sentence. You know, we all need editors, especially me. So if some of you stop reading this because of uh, typos or poor language usage or poor English, just get over it. <laughs> Give me some grace. Get the point, okay? Enough said. And if you want this on live stream, if you want, if you want to just email us and we'll go ahead and send this out to you. If you, our family uh, that's on live stream, we'll send this out to you. All right. You can do this anywhere, in the airport, in the office, wherever you're at, you can do this. You do this continuously throughout the day. We must pray ceasingly, ceaselessly, and thanksgiving and worship and praise. This is an ongoing daily work throughout the day. You, you process what you're thinking throughout the day. Step one. Here we go. When we thank God, he listens. Thank him. When we praise God, he's by our side. Praise him. When we praise God, he acts in our behalf. Worship him. When we worship, see, there's a typo right there. You editors, get over it. When we worship God, <laughs> he acts in our behalf. Worship him. All right, here we go, step four. So spend time worshiping. Now, in seven minutes, we're, some of you can worship for an hour. All we're asking is seven minutes. Worship him. Spend that time. Keep doing. Keep it going. Keep it. Don't stop. But this, this simple little exercise will help. All right, now, you get done thanking him. You get done praising him. You get down worship him. And you can choose to do this right now. You can get on your knees or you can stand up and just raise your arms. But this is what you're doing. You're asking the Holy Spirit right now. Just everybody close your eyes. <laughs> Ask the Holy Spirit to show you what you should be working on. Breaking down and building up for the next 21 days. After you work on this, you have to work on it two more cycles on 21 days. It takes 21 days to renovate a toxic thought and 63 days to transform it. Practice using this, the things that he shows you. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. I'll just say this. What he's going to begin to do, he's going to show you more than one. But one of the greatest things, I believe, is to show you the things that you thought about yourself. Those are some of the most toxic of all because it hinders you from being able to believe. And I know many of you have heard this before. I know many of you have done this before, but please don't, sh don't shut it off because it takes you a multiple. It takes you probably seven times, I believe it's seven times before it really becomes a part of you. I think Lee had some really cool um, work that uh, something that he showed her in Revelation. He told her to write it down throughout the times he shows you. Write it down so you can hit it and then anything else he shows you, so it starts a continuous, perpetual thing that helps. Write it down because it's really good to do. Practice using this so it is implanted deep down so that you can use it and it makes a change in your life. It's not something that's stuck in your mind, but something you are utilizing. You have 
to be consciously practicing using it for the next 21 days, once again, and two more 21-day cycles for no less than seven minutes a day. Renewing your mind. This has been proven, so you understand the seven minutes, the 21 days. Science is proven. This is a scientific fact. It's been proven. Dr. Leaf used this in her practice. She saw these changes in these people's lives. Continually renewing your mind with the Word of God and meditating upon Him day and night. Then begin to thank Him for what He's t touched inside of you. Get down on your knees and let Him overtake you. Let His presence now, let His presence, these toxic thoughts, be very specific as you are allowing Him to wash the very things that He's shown you and lay them at His feet. The Lord talked about laying his, at his feet today, I believe, as in a form of worship. Leave all those toxic thoughts at his feet. Then begin to thank him because he knows the solution and freedom from it. And don't stop. So you see, what happens is most people, they try it three or four times and they, you know, they're not forever changed after... 60 years of the enemy beating the tar out of you and you don't, can't figure it out why it's not taken care of in two minutes. You see? It's discipline and it's, it's not going to be easy. It's like going to be like remodeling the bathroom. Press on. You're tougher than hell. Amen. Psalms 105 verse 24. Just see if you need scriptural backup for that. You are tougher than hell and anything they can throw your way. You got it? Amen? That was really weak. Weak. Amen? Very good. Much better. The Word changes everything. Everything is about Jesus coming in. It's about His reading His Word. It's about Him implanting His Word. It's about praying and getting yourself ready to receive His Word. See, it's only, the Word of God is only as effective as much as you put the Word into you. Because you don't, if you don't have a relationship with the Lord and you don't know Him, then you don't really truly believe He's going to make those changes in you. Do you get that? Go back and listen to streaming. You're going to get this the first time. Some of you have heard this three or four times. You're going to, hit it. You're going to keep hearing it. You're going to keep hearing it, and it's going to soak in even deeper. He's going to give you a greater revelation. Almost done. You and God together destroying that toxic work of darkness. Thank Him again. Dr. Lee believes that talking... Now, this is the one thing that I, I'm going to... I'm going to... Until she, it's proven differently. She believes that you take one thought at a time. And you deal with that for 21 days. If you take that, you will only have 17 of your thoughts resolved in a year. And see, I got a, I got a mother load of things that I need to get right. And I need more than... 17 things a year. <laughs> this is what I believe. Now, I'm, I'm not a scientist, but this is what I found to be true. As I went to the Lord and asked Him to be showing me, He began to show me these things. What happened? He began to bring this up. And He began to bring this up. And I'm finding throughout the day, He's, he's bringing other things up that I believed in those same areas. See, neurons, neurons are cells in your brain. Those babies collect, and they build branches, good or bad. We're going to talk about that next week. Excuse me, the next time I'm on. And those things are building, good or bad. What are you going to put in there? Good or rotten? Destructive. So this is what I, I'll agree with her. I disagree with her only in one area. See, I believe the Lord's going to do a multitude of things. And I think it's awesome what Lee was talking about because you can write them down and he can be, keep building on them. And what you do, you keep going and then you start one and there's 21 days and you keep spreading them out. If you have seven, excuse me, between, you have billions, some of them, some of us trillions, I believe that's because some of us have been around a lot longer. Thoughts. But the Lord, they're in masses, you know. I believe he's going to take you. And he's going to transform you very quickly. You're going to see the fruit of it. You guys, I see the fruit of it. I see the fruit of it. I see what he's doing. Let me finish this. 17 things, 17 things a year, 
in 21 day cycles for the rest of our lives we're going to practice this stuff we're going to get our hearts clean we're not going to let the junk that we believed about people we're going to begin to believe okay i want to ask how many of you you had something that you want to start okay i just want to exhort you as you go through this and you go through this day you're trusting that god's going to bring those thoughts up so when those thoughts come to you later in the day, don't consider that a condemnation or there's something wrong or that it's not working because these thoughts are coming up. That's God reminding you to lay it back down. So as you go through this, don't despair that those things that you're working on come back up. Yeah. Praise God that they did because it's very easy to walk in despair and say it's not working. Yeah. But it is working because Holy Spirit's bringing it up saying, I want to work with you in this now. Let's lay it down. Yeah. He's saying, let's do this together. Come on, I want to deal with this, right? I want to do this with you right now. So you and, he, you and he together. Man, the Holy Spirit is so powerful. And he's so gentle. If you're with him. <laughs> and let your spouse encourage you. Yes, dear. I've, I've done this. When I first got saved, um, I didn't even know about the secret place. But I automatically would go to the secret place. In the beginning, it's hard to do it because it feels like flesh, and it probably is. Do it in your flesh. And then this, the, he'll intervene. He'll start to intervene. But com- continue to do it, even if you don't feel like, if you feel like the, your prayers are hitting the ceiling and falling back on your head. Just keep doing it. Because what ends up happening is you'll be at the bank or you'll be at the grocery store, and he's pulling you. He's pulling you. He's like, okay, come on, come on, get the eggs, get the milk, get in the car. I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. And you're like, okay, okay. And you're like, you're in a hurry. And you'll, he'll start talking to you in the car. And, and I mean, I'm bawling by, four, by the time I'm getting to my door. And, it, and literally, you know, like even by, it, was, it happened very quickly within less than a week for me that he was pulling me into the house. See, see isn't in less than a week. You know, it wasn't, it was a multiple. Okay, who's the guy that guarantees? I guarantee. Who's, who's that? Was it the men's warehouse? Uh, I guarantee. I guarantee. I guarantee that the word of God in you can change your brain. Science proves it. You. Could. People would see a difference. See, isn't that cool? That's. And that's the cool thing. Okay, I got to end. I could keep going for hours, but I'm not. Oh, yes, but I believe the Lord will bring multiple things at once to deal with instead of a few. Okay, that was what happened was I went in and made a correction. I I didn't change the font to make it one page. All right, here we go. Take it, do it. Everybody, who doesn't have an accountability partner? And then we're going to get you out of here. Okay, find one. Okay. Tisa, you and Charlie. Tell Charlie about this. Share this with him. You guys start doing this. Fax, email, scan it in, send it out. Get her done. Okay. Please do this. If you don't have anybody in mind right now, find someone. Call someone today. Don't let one day go by. And this is all that you're doing. And I didn't even get to that. I will get to it the next time I speak. I want you to put seven, and I'll explain it, comma, Eight, one slash 63, 63 days to get this all washed. And I'll tell you what happens. What, is, what the seven and what the eight means is what the Bible speaks about in his word. Ah, come on. How about you got, um, come on, let's do this. Okay. I know. Hang with me. That's what this, so some of you have been struggling with the seven and eight. And you go, what in the world is he talking about? I didn't make it clear. All right. This is what. This is what seven represents when you're sending your text to your buddy saying, I got my job done. Seven means d- divine perfection. He's perfecting those thoughts. Rest, spiritual completion. Ooh, he's completing that spiritual work that he's doing inside of you. Blessed, full, satisfied, and you have enough. How about that? All right, this is what eight, this is what eight represents. Ooh, this is really good. Where are you at? Come back. Come back. I got you covered up. Okay. New beginnings. How many new beginnings? See, it fits right in. Super abundant, um, saturating, abounding in strength to make fat or cover with fat oil. Worship, resurrection, 
or regeneration. Ooh, that's powerful. Circumcision of the heart, the cutting off the sins of the flesh. Eternity. That's what the seven and eight represent. Got it? So when you say seven, comma, eight, one of 63, day one. Next, tomorrow, you're going to text your, your accountability partner. Two slash 63. Third day, get it completed. Three slash 63. Four slash 64. You, uh, 63. You got it? Did I make it clear? Is everybody clear? Yes. Okay. Okay, once you see me afterward. Okay, I'll help you with it. You're saying and decreeing those things that the Lord just did as you spent that seven minutes in that day. That's what you're saying. Seven and eight is what the Lord just did in your completion. All right. I can't wait to eat. How about you? You got still got a few days to get in the fast if you're not there. To, corporate, you could fast any day. But the corporate fast we're talking about. All right, here we go. Um, uh, do we have prophetic people up here? And I'm going to pray. Prophetic teams coming up to pray for people. We have a, we have a meeting downstairs that, uh, for the team that's going to the Philippines. Uh, let's pray. Father, I thank you. You're going to burn these treasures in our heart. Help us to do self-discipline. Help us to understand what you're doing. And Lord, we just thank you. We give you the glory and the praise for all that you're doing now. As you're giving us a passionate pursuit of your truth to get the healing that we need. And for those who have said that we didn't, they didn't need any healing, you need it worse than any of us. Lord, we thank you for the things that you're doing now. And we ask that you would shine your light in those dark places in our life. Lord, we give you the glory now in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you all.